So hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about a really useful research tool that's called Illicit AI. And this tool will help you in summarizing, organizing your literature reviews, extracting information, and writing your thesis and paper. So the first thing you need to do is type in Illicit AI in Google or go straight away to illicit.com. With a lot of these sites will ask you to sign in. You can do that with your Google account, with your email, um, and you can go straight to the free plan um, to explore if you have not used it already. Now with the free plan, an important thing to note is that they give you about 5,000 credits. And it's a bit difficult to understand what they mean and how these credits are used. So I'm gonna show you as we go along so that you get an understanding that you can actually quickly use up these credits if you're not careful and then if you need to upgrade um, you can go into the paid version um, and that will entail about 12,000 credits so let's start off with just exploring how the, uh, the actual uh, AI tool works so this is the home page and it will ask you to put in a research question so let's start by saying for example look at the impact of business analytics and say big data on business performance okay and i will search you can see that it's searching over 125 million academic papers um, and it will give you the summary of the first four papers you can see that it has extracted and it will decide on the most uh, relevant papers depending on your research questions if i wanted the summary of more papers like eight papers i have to go to the plus version and you can see the summary is quite useful studies have found a positive impact of business analytics and big data on business performance just a wide uh, summary of the uh, of the information that's in the papers it gives me some um extract some uh, specific citations of how investments in big data lead to improved financial performance and so on so now we can see that here we have the papers that have been extracted and a simple summary for each paper and the summaries are actually quite accurate so here it says big data and data analytics to lead to better performance big data analytics investments lead to advantages in terms of financial performance of the firm and so on um, an important thing to remember the summary that it actually extracts the information directly from the abstract so make sure that if you are using it to write your literature review that you paraphrase certain um, aspects so that you you know you know plagiarizing any actual papers. Now, another useful thing is that it can give you a quick indication about which papers you want to explore further. So for example, if I come onto this paper, I can see that it's given me some specific results. It's about three to 7% improvement in firm productivity. So I can actually start this paper so I can come back to it. Um, and I know that it's actually a useful paper. Now, one thing I want to show you that if you head over to the left column and you scroll all the way down, it can actually show you the number of credits that you, you've used. So if I go down to my workflow, um, you can see that I have out of my 5,000 free credits, every search item or every kind of operation that I do on Illicit actually uses about 67, 68 credits. So that keep that in mind so that you're actually aware of how much credits you're going through because before you know it, it you, you will use up your uh, 5,000 free credits. So let's go back. And now let's look at some of the other features that we can uh, get on Illicit. So if we go to uh, filters, you can see that I can actually specify um, that I only want papers that have a PDF. And actually um, using Illicit to um, uh, to summarize papers that have PDFs is quite useful because then uh, it will actually extract the information from the PDF. It has is that it allows you to filter and search by uh, keywords in the abstract. So say, for example, I wanted to be a bit more specific and I wanted to make sure that my abstract contains the keyword financial performance. So I can add that in my search. You can see it's now been added. And then I can start searching and you can see now it's searching all the papers and bringing back results that should have financial performance in the abstract so okay so let's just choose a paper and check that it's actually done that so if i look at the abstract now i can see this that yes 
terms of financial performance in the abstract and that helps me generate even more specific results and make sure that the uh, output that it produces um, is relevant to my research question. So if I go back to results, I can also here, I've got an, an area here, a feature that allows me to search or create a column and that will act as a comparison between between all the papers that have been generated. So, so say for example, I wanted to look at the main findings of every paper. So if I add that as a column, you'll see now that for every paper, uh, it gives me an overview of the main findings of that paper. So for example, here, big data has the potential to provide companies with high business value. Um, the uh, big data analytics solution has direct impact on the performance of the firm and so on, which is really useful for me to start to understand, you know, is this paper worth me spending the time reading it um, and including it in my literature review or is really the it is the main finding not exactly relevant to what I'm looking for. Um, and as you can see, you can add columns about all sorts of things. So for example, um, I will add the outcome measured. So here you can see it's financial performance of the firm, uh, it looks at firm productivity as well, uh, operational performance here, financial performance. Again, remember I've specified this, I've filtered this, so I'm getting uh, very specific results to what I want. I can remove the filter if I want more broad um, outcomes that are being measured. Okay, I can also uh, specify that I want column on limitations of the paper. And this is really useful as well because then it can start to give me an idea of, okay, what are specific papers missing? Um, is there something that I can build upon and have a new angle, new idea that is new contribution to my paper? So this limitations column is actually quite useful if you're struggling to find um, a specific contribution and it can help you quickly go through the limitations and really understand where the gaps in the literature are. Another very useful column that could help you would be, for example, to add uh, things on uh, see if you want to, to have the methodology and if you're struggling to put together a methodology and you want to see you know what the uh, papers in your field are using as their um, methodologies then you can you can add that to, to have a quick comparison and you can actually use it to um, justify your chosen methodology and say that you, the majority of papers in my field have used um, so and so and this is what I mean so you can see here econometric methods um, sometimes it will not be explicitly outlined, so you need to go to the paper or you might decide to disregard that paper if you wanted to. Let's see here, regression techniques or statistical methods uh, and so on. Now another really useful feature that you can use from the search or create a column method, and this is something that I find you know, a lot of people struggle with in the beginning, is determining a theoretical contribution to their paper. So I'm going to write here, what is the or a theoretical framework. What is the theoretical framework in the paper? Okay, and then I'm just going to ask. I'm just going to enter that. Create a column, and then you'll see that it will start to give me. It will extract the information of the theoretical frameworks that are provided in each of these papers. So let's see here. This one uses the resource-based view. The second paper also is using the resource-based view as the theoretical framework. Uh, transaction analytical IT systems is a distinction. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. BDA capability. So we've got dynamic capability. Um, given here, let's see. Again, using capability frameworks, technology acceptance model. Okay, so I've already extracted some useful theoretical frameworks that can be used, and I can continue to load more papers and get even more. Uh, so if, if I had to quickly choose um, a framework that is uh, important in that in this field, I would probably look, be looking at dynamic capabilities, resource-based view, maybe the technology acceptance model, um, and then if I wanted to add another element to it, search a different topic that I could integrate it in with this topic and find another theoretical framework. So very useful in quickly giving me um, an overview of what my literature is using in terms of theoretical frameworks, methodologies, um, and uh, outcomes. 
And as you can see here, you can continue to add any columns that are useful to your to your studies. It could be uh, information on study design. If you're doing, if you wanted specific participants, looking at their age or gender, you can add that in. Uh, the objectives, if you're struggling with, say, the research questions, you can look at what specific research questions were asked in these paper. You can even explore the variables that were used in the paper and so on. So it really is, um, this tool is a really powerful tool for comparisons, for giving you a, a quick overview um, of the field in terms of the research questions that you're looking at um, and, and actually saving you hours uh, of time summarizing the information. Do let me know in the comments if there's another way that you're using Illicit that you have found useful in your research.